as well. New Dawn has a couple of announcements to make, so I'm going to call on Nicole Khmer to do that. Nicole? Thank you, Marie. Welcome, everybody. So we don't normally do this, but New Dawn has been very busy, as they always are. And there's a few really timely things that are happening and really exciting things that are happening right now. Thanks, Albert. No problem. <laughs> um, that we wanted to take a moment to share with you. So as many of you know, of course, this is RRSP time, and it wouldn't be an Ideas Powered by Passion in February if we didn't do our little push for our um, New Dawn C. diff. Can you hit it again? It's my little helper here. Um, so yes, this year, New Dawn is offering for the eighth year um, a C. diff program, the Community Economic Development Investment Fund. As I said, it is our eighth year, and this year it's a little bit different. Um, first of all, it's called the New Dawn Innovation Fund. Okay. Hit it. Oh, can you go back one? Sorry. <laughs> we rely on volunteers. <laughs> can you do it one more time? Awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Every year, Nova Scotians invest about $600 million in RRSPs, and about less than 2% of that is actually reinvested back into Nova Scotia. So this is what the Community Economic Development Investment Fund aims to do, is to really capture and keep that money in the province. But of course, New Dawn really wants to keep it right here in this community. Um, so CDFs are designed to support local, or this CDF particularly, particularly is designed to support local entrepreneurs, create jobs, stimulate economic growth, and generate a measurable return. One more time. Great. So in the eight years that New Dawn has been doing at CDF, you can see we started in 2004, missed a couple of years in there. But in the eight years, we've totaled just shy of $7 million. So that's this community contributing to this CDF here and it's all reinvested and kept in this community, which is really exciting. So as you can see in those years, 33 million um, was brought in in the province. New Dawn brought in about 21% of that in total. So it's been a highly successful program. This year is particularly exciting. Um, we're investing in three local innovation companies. Um, k and thank you. And they are MediaSpark, Mercado Digital, and Advanced Glazing. So our goal this year is to raise about 1.6 million. And I talked to our accountant today, Peter, and he informs me we're about 1.2, 1.3, maybe a little more. So there's still some room and there's still some time if you want to get in. Um, just give a call, book an appointment, um, and come on in. We'd love to have you part of the family in this way. Okay, so that's our little plug. <laughs> um, I'm also here one more time. Okay, I want to uh, share something that's been brewing for the last number, well, actively brewing for the last number of months. It's actually been um, a discussion for a few years now since Ideas has really caught on. As Marie said, we're in our fourth year. Um, and what we really recognize is people are coming out in droves and people are really watching the YouTube videos that we post afterwards. The conversation that is sparked because of ideas has been incredible and we don't fully know all the ways that it reaches out into the community, but we're hearing all kinds of great things. Are you giving people sneak peeks? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> anyway, as we recognize this, we can see that there seems to be a real willingness for the community to engage even more. And because of this, we really want to, so, really want to respond to this um, amplified hunger for engagement. So one of the ways we'd like to do that is by offering a new program that's kind of a, an extension of ideas called Films for Change Cape Breton. We're working on our logo right now. We hope to have it in the next couple of weeks. And its goal is really to discover, engage, grow, transform, and act. So it's to continue to bring people together in much the same forum as we do here at Ideas, come together around a common theme, a common issue that's active and alive in our minds, in our community, and to really have a full conversation about that. 
So we're very excited about this. It's starting this March. March 12th is our first one. And we'll go every second Tuesday of the month from now until June. And it will take place at the Islands Arts Cafe. Most people know that as Cape Breton Fudge Company in the little side space there. We'll start around 7 and end around 9.30. So there'll be a film showing. There'll be a host that will facilitate the discussion afterwards. Um, and of course, there'll be some great fudge and tea and coffee. So the first film that we'll be showing is called Dirt, the movie. Uh, many of you may know Vandana Shiva. It's an activist uh, from India that does work all over, the all over the world around soil preservation and different gardening techniques. Um, so I just want to take a couple of moments and show you the trailer for this movie because it's, it's really quite exciting. Um, there's been a lot of dialogue in the community about the need to spark this discussion much deeper and in a much more organized manner. So I just want to take a minute, just give me one moment and I'll pop that up for you. We depend on dirt to purify and heal the systems that sustain us. If we don't take care of the soil, which is just the first five centimeters layer of life on the earth, our future is totally on that. This much soil probably has in it tens of billions of microorganisms. Dirt might be more alive than we are. You've got to grow food for humanity, and at the same time, you've got to grow food for nature. Most of the world considers this a really viable building material. We are dirt. Soil we've lost in the last 100 years. Industrial farming created a huge demand for nitrogen fertilizer. 25% of greenhouse gas emissions are coming from war against the soil. Deadly conflicts are breaking out over our dwindling supply of fertile soil. Conflict over dirt. The entire Brazilian rainforest is being cut down. For expansion of soil, floods, drought, climate change, even war are all directly related to the way we. It's probably the most important window in the history of Homo sapiens. God made dirt, dirt for work. So that's just a little snippet of what you'll see on March the 12th when you all come to Dirt the Movie. <laughs> um, and we're still working on the remainder of our lineup for the rest of the, the season. So the last thing I wanted to share with you is in follow-up to our last Ideas talk, um, which is a month ago, Rankin McSween. Uh, where's Rankin? I saw him earlier. There he is. Uh, did a very passionate talk about the need for truth-telling in community. And after this amazing talk and the dialogue that followed, Rankin put out a call to action. So he asked, who and how would we like to engage? How would we like to continue this conversation? Would we like to continue this conversation? The response was overwhelming. We took back an e a stack of email addresses. Many of you have put your email in um, to us tonight, to keep the, or last month, to keep the conversation going. And so we wanted to let you know that at the end of March or the very beginning of April, we'll be gathering in a conversation cafe style. You'll hear more about this through uh, Facebook, through email. And we'll be hosting a series of conversations. And they'll be sort of in a more non-traditional format, very much in a cafe style, so we can really allow and honor everyone's voices to be heard. And what we really want to hear about are your hopes, your aspirations, your fears, your griefs about what's going on in the community. And from there, the conversation will just continue and it will sort of emerge on its own and um, we'll respond to that accordingly. So to begin, 
The first session will happen at the end of March, and it will be a fairly open one. So that's, that's all I can report to you tonight. The date will be forthcoming, and we really hope that you can be in attendance for that. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Marie. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for those exciting uh, upcoming events. We'll have to mark our calendars. Um, so now we're on to the first official or formal segment of the evening, and I'm pleased to introduce tonight's first speaker. Peggy Vassello holds a bachelor's degree in art, and she is currently finishing a business degree at CBU. She worked for 11 years as the manager of operations for family services, and over the years has worked at the board level with a number of community organizations. Peggy is passionate about working with youth. For approximately two and a half years, she worked as a committee member with, among others, educator Ron Neville and Sergeant Tom Ripley to achieve the establishment of a youth center in Sydney. Some years back, Peggy's mother-in-law, Louise, was one of a number of wonderful volunteers who worked with me at the VON. Louise and I have grandchildren who are more or less in the same age range, so of course we always found time to talk about our grandchildren and share what was happening in their lives. During the three or so years that we worked together, through Louise, I came to know Peggy, her husband Todd, and their children Stephen, Rachel, and Sarah as a vibrant, loving, and community-minded family committed to a set of values and purpose that leaves me not at all surprised that she was elected or selected as the director of Sydney's new, new, new Youth Access Centre. Please join me in welcoming Peggy Vassello. Hi, good evening, everyone. That was quite the introduction, Marie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can we show the video first? Yeah. yeah. I have a short video here that we just uh, completed for our launch last week. And I think this really, in pictures and words, talks about the center and does it better justice than I can do. Just have a look. Access Aid Week is going to fill a gap that has existed for many years. There are a lot of youth in Sydney and um, other areas in Cape Breton that have a hard time accessing services. So whether they need mental health services, addiction services, housing, transportation, they don't always know where they need to go for those things. They also don't necessarily want to go to a hospital. It's a house, first of all. It's not an office. So we want to, we wanted to be in the community. We wanted to be in a residential area. And we wanted youth to feel comfortable coming here. Very sort of uh, informal, sort of warm, welcoming place, and that's the way we want to keep it. Well, we have a coordinator here, we have a social worker. 